Welcome to this week's episode of Bonding Over Bonds. I'm Jim Jackson. This is my colleague, Kevin Kazi. And Kevin, we've been doing a lot of bonding over bonds on the one topic dominating the markets, inflation. <laughs> we sure have. Inflation seems to be the number one topic discussed around the fixed income markets. The Fed did uh, come out their minutes on Tuesday. They did say we were expecting some higher inflation going forward. Uh, however, they view this as transitory. Um, markets, I don't think they're as, sh as sure. Um, we've seen Treasury yields uh, go lower week over week, except last week we did see uh, higher yields uh, after the CPI number. Yields rose seven basis points, but they've kind of simmered down and now they're in the, I think, one or two basis points from pre-CPI number. You know, I, I have to say the credit markets were also flat, so lower rates, flat credit markets, the Bloomberg Barclays Ag, as of, you know, so far this week, has been positive. So Kevin, uh, so much for the inflation scare. Agreed. I think we're going to resolve this debate in the marketplace, whether it's going to be transitory or sustained inflation. You know, I, I think it's uh, helpful for our viewers that we define what is meant by transitory. So I think our view is that if inflation remains high into the fourth quarter, the risks of being more sustained as opposed to transitory are higher. Uh, inflation prints that we're seeing now are driven uh, partially by COVID-related drivers. So you see some unusual movements. So for example, month over month, we saw used car prices increase almost 10% in one month, which is a pretty large increase on an annual basis. So Kevin, in addition to watching the price of your used El Camino skyrocket, what are the market indicators saying? I think a lot of the market indicators are mixed at this time. Uh, we are seeing the, the five-year break-even inflation rate uh, that's embedded in market pricing at 2.69%, which is an increase of 0.72% year-to-date. This is important if you look, when you look at the 10-year break-even rate, it, which is 2.5%. Which is so it does imply that there is some transitory nature to uh, these numbers. So Kevin, I would just point out that the, the average inflation rate as measured by CPI over the last 10 years was 1.8%. So the expectations uh, for inflation are higher over the next 10 years, um, but they're not dramatically higher than what we've seen over the last 10. Uh, now, this debate as to whether inflation is transitory or not, it is indeed a global one. Agreed, agreed. Uh, Non-U.S. buyers of Treasury bonds seem to be um, on the side that our inflation is transitory and they're continuing to buy large sums of U.S. Treasuries. Um, we are seeing, seeing this almost uh, weekly of uh, foreign buyers in, in our Treasury market, and it's keeping our Treasury yields trading in a narrow range. Um, in fact, year-to-date on a 10-year Treasury yield, hit its peak the last day of the quarter, not after the CPI number. That is certainly a uh, notable point. I think also in this week's Fed minutes, they've started to talk about when they are going to tighten monetary policy. But the way that they phrase it is that they're going to start to talk about, about when they're going to talk about tightening monetary policy. And it just leaves me to wonder with that kind of clarity from the Fed, what are fixed income investors supposed to do? And I think we just fall back on what we view as important, is that fixed income investors should maintain diverse portfolios to mitigate the wide range of risks that are out there in the market. So Kevin, I'd like to thank you for joining me this week, and I'd like to thank you, the viewer, for joining us as we bond over bonds.